guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be playing with the Volcano Goddess eyeshadow palette from Becca. It is brand new. She is absolutely gorgeous. I have had the chance to play with these before getting on camera because I wanted to, I don't know, lately I've been wanting to get my bearings in an eyeshadow palette before I get on camera so that it's not just like an all out disaster. It's gonna be kind of a disaster no matter what, but I figure I could mitigate some of the catastrophe by trying it ahead of time, which is why we're not doing the Gemini palette today. I'm gonna do that probably Friday soon. It's gonna come out soon, but I haven't gotten a chance to like dip into it yet and I don't wanna get on camera and just like, I don't know, end up with just green everywhere. I went on my notifications tab for YouTube and I asked you guys, I will just read the question to you. Okay, I said, hey fam, I'm seeing tons of looks for the Volcano Goddess palette just showcasing the metallics, but I just got the most gorgeous look from the mattes and neutrals tonight. Which would you rather see? First, because we can always do more later. That was 12 hours ago, so I gave it some time to get some answers. And we have 92 votes and by 74%, Nudes and Neutrals won. And that's the truth. I went to an event last night and I got a chance to play with this palette and <sighs> the nudes and the neutrals in this palette, they're easy to overlook. I mean, they are the greatest amount of them in here, but they're easy to overlook because you really see these really gorgeous metallics when you open this palette. But these shades are absolutely incredible. And I don't know guys, like, I don't know your life, but chances are, you know, metallic blue isn't your work uniform. So I just thought it would be a really more useful, practical, like maybe less exciting, but a much more practical use of this palette to show you guys a look that you can achieve from the nudes and the neutrals. So that is what we're going to be doing today. I also have the new Becca Glow Gloss in Molten Mauve, and we will be trying that on as well today. So I'm going to move you guys in and we're going to go ahead and get started and talk about this palette. Because probably a lot of you guys are going to ask, the foundation that's on my face right now is the Natasha Denota Foundation X, and I also used my Revolution Conceal and Define probably just as much of this as I did of the foundation. I just think this is a really good look. I'm also wearing the blush from Makeup Geek from Monday. I'm still really, really into it. Anyway, I already have primer on my eyes. We are going to jump into this here palette. So I did a little bit of reading on this and apparently this has tourmaline in it. Tourmaline, I mean, it's in my blow dryer. It's in that weird rolly thing that Tati uses on her face. Apparently, and I don't know whether it's voodoo or whether it's science or what, but you know, it's supposed to have anti-aging qualities. It's supposed to help with anxiety, but like, I don't know. It's not doing anything wrong. I'm not mad about it. I'll put some tourmaline on my eyes. I will take anything that claims that it is safe and anti-aging. The first thing we're going to do is go in with a big fat fluffy brush and I'm just going to dust a neutral shade all over my primer to get us started. So we're gonna start with volcanic sand right here. Just gonna roll my brush in there and get to getting on my eyeballs. So if I could describe my experience using this palette for the first time last night, it would be that if you guys have watched my channel before, you know how obsessed I am with this one shade in the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. It's called Smog, and it's this perfect, neutral, taupe shimmer shade that I can build an entire smoky eye around, and I'm just absolutely, like, over the moon about it. It is like they took that shade and created nine shades that just kind of riffed on it. I mean, obviously, maybe not these so much, but they're very, very neutral, I guess is my point. Like, these are super basic neutral shades that once they go on the eye, they look so creamy. As I was putting it on last night, like every time I would put another color on, I was like, I look awesome. Like that's the best feeling ever. And I try a lot of eyeshadow palettes. And usually when I'm thinking my way around an eyeshadow palette, I'm like, okay, what color do I want to focus around? What color do I want to showcase? How do I want to have fun with this palette? Like with no pressure and no camera on me or anything, I felt okay kind of playing it safe and just using the neutrals. And I was just blown away by not just the formula, but the, the choices of like the, the temperature tonalities of these shadows. So we already have volcanic sand down. I'm just gonna build a little bit more of it for my transition shade kind of right here, you know, where transition shades go. And I'm using the uh, defined crease brush from Makeup Geek, which I have quickly fallen in love with. And I'm just building this shade up right here. I want it to actually 
actually have some presence. This is actually going to be part of the look, not just a transition shade. And then I'm gonna go into Granite, which I absolutely love as a crease shade. It is matte. It's pretty light for what you would think of as a crease shade, but I don't know, just wash, it's gorgeous. I should speak to the formula here. This is, I think that the reason that I got so just carried away last night using this and obsessing about it was because these shades just blend so easily. And honestly, I wouldn't expect anything less because I have always loved their highlighter formula so much. Their highlighter formula has this really great quality to it where you can use it as just like a cheek top highlight or, you know, highlight the, the high points of your face but you can also use it all over your face. I mean, if that's what you're into, but I mean, for a long time, my routine involved putting a Becca powder all over my entire face because it adds this like luminescence that looks more like real skin. So when I was using full coverage foundations and stuff, because I had such bad acne, I would then hit it with like the Becca champagne pop all over my face because once I hit it with a finishing spray, it looked more like real skin after I had so much coverage on my face. So, I mean, the, the formula on their highlighters is just, I mean, it's legendary. Look at these colors, you guys. I, I am having trouble making decisions now. I do think that haze is the direction that I wanna go in now, right here. This shade is just un- freaking believably gorgeous. It is just that perfect neutral pinky taupe. And so I'm going to use that on the lid. I'm going to use it on a tiny little flat brush so that we can get some precision here. And these shades, the, I'm gonna spray this. These shades are cool in the sense that like, I don't know, I talk about this a lot, but when you have a shimmer, a lot of times people just throw it down as a foil, but in so many ways, a shimmer shade blends really beautifully, and I feel like that's kind of underutilized sometimes to actually throw a shimmer or a, a satin on a blender brush and use the shimmer effect of it as a, you know, a more satiny blending medium than just trying to get the sparkle sparkle out of everything. So um, that's not what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm laying this down so that we can get a really beautiful kind of opaque pigment out of this shade Haze. There is just something about a palette that has this many high performing, really close in shade neutrals that you can get this incredible eye look out of very subtle tones. And to me, I don't know, that makes me feel really beautiful. I hesitate to say that this is kind of a last minute contender for my wedding makeup because it does have such beautiful flattering neutrals in it. We do have some fallout. That is because I'm really piling this up and I'm probably using too small of a brush. I think it probably wouldn't have so much fallout if I were using a bigger brush, but I just wanted some precision on this. Now I am going to go in with that same little tiny blender brush and I'm going to touch into granite again and kind of rebuild the crease and kind of blend that haze shade that we just put on. I wanna go in with Red Rock right here. It's a little bit more pink. I'm gonna use that just kind of on the outside of the lid and kind of blend it into our crease shade a little bit. It's just very soft. Everything about it just lends itself to a really soft, blended eye look. I love that shade. I love that shade. In fact, I'm going to take the Sigma Small Tapered Blending and dip back into that shade. And I'm going to use that to kind of cut just a little bit right here. I wanna make sure that that shade kind of has a little bit more presence above the brow bone. I mean, above the brow bone. What the hell? Above the eyelid. Yes. You guys 
tell me whether you would rather me do a first impressions and like you get my shock and awe in real time or whether you would rather get probably a better eye look out of it but me you know already know how I feel about the palette I feel like that's kind of the trade-off okay I'm gonna take a flat brush I'm gonna clean it <laughs> because it's still got pumpkin spice all over it all right I'm going to dip that in cloud cloud is the palest matte in the palette but then we also have this shade diamond dust right here which is I'm not gonna lie y'all it's kind of weird the texture of it is chunky to say the least like can you see that it's kind of hard the texture of it doesn't it's not smooth it's very odd and kind of lumpy feeling but it's a really pretty color it shifts gold it's white that shifts gold I just, I tried to use it last night as like a brow highlight or something, and it just doesn't really do that. You need to kind of stay in the mattes for that reason, but I did use it to kind of add this like glint on my eyelid, and we might do that again. It just, it's a weird color. All right, so we've got our little brow bone highlight now, and we're going to take volcanic sand right here and blend kind of up from the pink that we put on there a minute ago. I have seen this palette used on deep skin tones. I do feel like it does well on not just my pale, pale skin. And even the lightest shade in the palette is not super duper light. It's not like a stark, cool white. I feel like most skin tones could find something to like about this palette. And I'm going to take Cloud right here and I'm actually going to start by putting that kind of all over the lid. Not all over the lid. Kind of in the middle. The middle and inside. Not the inner corner. I'm, not, I'm doing a terrible job, but you, you see where I'm putting it. I want to kind of blend it in with Red Rock, which is what we had right on the outside. And I'm going to take some of Haze and just kind of blend back out from here. And what we end up with is just kind of a light eyelid, gently gradienting up in the crease. And it gives me this kind of like 90s vibe. I am going to take a little bit of Diamond Dust and do what I did yesterday and just kind of Put it like against the lash line. It's flaky, it's chunky, it's definitely not a smooth highlight color, but it just does something unique. Like I'm still, jury's still kind of out about this shade to me, but I like can't resist either, just a little tiny bit of shimmer. I'm going to take my finger in cloud and just kind of highlight ever so slightly, or try to, <laughs> my brow bone up here. And we're going to clean up underneath my eyes with my matte powder because <laughs> it's like really accentuating. It's like falling in troughs underneath my eyes which I didn't mean as like shade on the palette. <laughs> I think that it's just me kind of like playing and piling on product. And then I want to take a, a skinny little brush, a little flat guy here, and I'm going to go under the eye with Red Rock, and then I'll probably use like Volcanic Sand on a fluffy brush to blend that a little bit. I really, really like this Red Rock color. It's such like a neutral, plummy rose color. And it's actually really interesting to see how that plays as a like a wash up here with a fluffy brush. That's what we put up there as Red Rock. And then to really like pack it on with a little flat brush, like the color difference that you can get. And then I'm going to take this tiny little fluffy brush again, and I'm going to go into Volcanic Sand, the kind of tan color right here, and just kind of blend under the eye. I feel like we kind of lost a little bit of the foiliness there, so I'm going to go put just a little bit more of Red Rock right in the center. 
There we go. And then I'm going to take a flat brush and just kind of clean up on the inner corner right here with our lightest shade cloud. So I went to a wedding last night, you guys, and it was incredible. We weren't allowed to take any pictures because there was a band, not a band, a quartet that was playing entirely and only Final Fantasy music. It was, you know, the bride and groom's choice. It was this gorgeous hall, but it was like retrofitted from a dim sum restaurant. <laughs> and so we ate amazing, like authentic Chinese food and it was absolutely incredible. And instead of there being a bartender, we had really high end like liquor on a giant Lazy Susan, which came to be known as the Lazy Boozin in the middle of the table with like mix, like mixers for all, like, it was one of the weirdest weddings I've ever been to. And it, we were just there for the reception, but it was amazing. It was the best. And so that was what I wore a similar, similar eye look to last night. I'm gonna put a little bit more diamond dust on the lid and just see what happens. I am going to throw some eyeliner on so it won't look so okay okay I like that better so on this eye I kind of spread it and on that eye I don't know if you can really see the difference but I kind of patted it instead and I like that I like patting it you end up with more of a gradient more of like a diffused color I'm actually going to take that on my little flat brush that we were using and I'm going to mirror that underneath my eye too It's hard. It's a hard shade to use. It's weird. Like, I don't not like it. It's just, I don't know. It's unfamiliar territory. Okay, so before I jump off and do some brows and some mascara and eyeliner and all that, I'm going to swatch these kind of four showstoppers here. So we have hematite, which is one of my favorite stones. When I was a kid, I was like obsessed with hematite. It's kind of weird. Well, now I see why everyone wanted to play with the metallics. Um, these are gorgeous. <laughs> I kind of want to call an audible and go all over my lid with one of these. But honestly, guys, like this very pinky look, let's go ahead and swatch diamond dust too. Like this very pinky look doesn't really jive to me with any of these shades necessarily. Like I don't want to screw it up, but that man, that lava shade. So, okay. So this is hematite. This is midnight sapphire. This is lava. This is gilded. And then this is diamond dust, which I have very mixed feelings on diamond dust. I don't know. And then there's crater. Crater is really beautiful too. Crater is like this satin. Oh my God. Okay, why am I not using Crater? That's beautiful. I'm gonna use a little bit of that in to like deepen the outer corner. And TBH, when I did this last night, I totally got carried away again. And so I can't even, I, I figured I would actually simplify what I did last night, but it's not what ended up happening at all, so gonna take a little bit of granite which is like the matte version of that shade and just kind of pull up from there I really like this little brush from makeup geek I'm gonna order like a lot of new brushes and just kind of see what sticks so if I've demonstrated anything here today it's that you can just keep piling these shades on and stuff just kind of keeps getting deeper and more dimensional. So I'm not going to say this is like the easiest or uh, simplest look that I've, uh, that I've put together, but you could just concentrate on like two shades in this palette and get a perfectly wearable, beautiful, everyday eye look. And I, I think that that's kind of the selling point here. I got carried away because there are so many beautiful neutrals in here. And honestly, I just, I think you could just like, you could get hundreds of looks out of just that. And then these, yes, they are the scene stealing shades in here. And yes, I do want to at some point try, you know, just throwing one of these all over my lid and then building from there. But that is really, 
what I'm seeing everywhere right now. So though you are not going to be at a shortage of those kinds of tutorials just because I don't choose to do one. So I'm going to wash these swatches off of my arms so they don't get all over my clothes, but man, are those pretty. Woo! And I'm going to put on some liner and some mascara and some brow mousse, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about this lip gloss. You guys, I'm so obsessed. I definitely think you could get where I got to on my eyes with less effort and fewer colors. I was kind of, I just get carried away sometimes, but I love this like gentle gradient here. And I think that the main things, if you were really going to try and just, you know, capture this eye look with a few colors instead of just going ham sandwich like I did, you'd really concentrate your efforts around Red Rock right here. Red Rock is, I feel like the focal point of this. It's kind of where we end up with the local color up here. It's what I used underneath my lash line. And it's beautiful, laid really, really heavy and opaque, and you really get like the, the shimmer from it. But it's also really pretty, just kind of blended out with a fluffier brush. These three are going to be kind of the anchor, I feel like, for any look. So I played with these six right here, mainly today. And I am absolutely in love with this eye look. Even though it's a lot of product on my eyeballs, it's all in the same family of tones that I would typically use on my face. A bronzer, a blush, the natural undertones of my skin. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and play with this lip now. This, like I said, is the Becca Glow Gloss in Molten Mauve, Mauve, whatever you wanna call it. And she looks like she's gonna be really, really dark when you put it on, but it is one of those glosses that shears out quite a bit and it's got subtle plumping properties to it and some really great shimmer qualities. So. I think I'm gonna throw a nude lip on underneath it and then put this on top just because, because I want to. Because I feel like I have a little look on my face. I don't know, I just think that it's gonna look better that way. So I'm gonna go with my typical lip liner. And then I'm gonna go in with Stephanie from Thrive. Use code Khaki for 15% off. really light coating of that. I don't want to go nuts because we are going to be throwing more on top. And then we're going to go in with the gloss here. It smells really minty. love that. I love that. You guys, this collection, this palette, this lip is such a mood. Like it is such a gorgeous classic. Just, I, I, I can't believe how like beautifully enhanced I feel. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm wearing a ton, ton of makeup because I don't feel like this is this crazy high contrast. People are going to go, oh wow, that's a lot of makeup kind of look. It's more like a wow, like she looks snatched kind of look. And I love that. I mean, I think it goes without saying that we all are more comfortable, probably. I can only speak for myself, but more comfortable playing in a neutral palette just because it's easier to blend on top of your skin because <laughs> it's closer to your skin tone, but this is exceptional. This is kind of coming up on Urban Decay Born to Run in the neutrals family and in the formula family of being something that I would consider using for my wedding. And I kind of think about it from a brand standpoint, there are tons of neutrals palettes and our brain goes to something totally different when you think about like the Tartlet all matte palette or any of those palettes where they basically focus on just being neutrals or just being mattes, just being the, the kinds of colors that are more comfortable to play with. A lot of us are like, that's not exciting. I'm not excited about that. Even though that is probably the most useful palette to have. That's the kind of thing that most people going about their daily life are going to get the most use out of. Still, we're tantalized by things that have bright colors in them. We are like crows. The addition of these wild colors in here, I get it. Like I get where they were coming from. They're like, hey, you guys, this is a standalone palette right here, but I'm not sure people would be that into it. Let's add one more row of something exciting and people have, we, we just kind of all of a sudden include a whole new group of people who are going to give a crap about this palette because it's got these really unique shades in it. So I think it's hard to necessarily like sell 
these kinds of shades <laughs> and say like, no, no, I know you've played with neutrals before, but these are different. Like these are new neutrals. Like there's just something about this formula and something about the, the tonality, the temperature of these shades that's different. You guys, I know we talk about a lot of palettes on my channel and usually they're kind of exciting because they're exciting. They're exciting because they're bright. They're exciting because they're new. This is exciting because it's freaking useful. This is such a practical palette. So that is where I will leave you with these. I hope that this wasn't too boring for you guys because I mean, I think we got a beautiful look out of it, but I, obviously, you know, this isn't avant-garde or tropical or safari or anything like that. This is not really outside of my comfort zone. This is really right within my comfort zone. And for that reason, I feel really beautiful. And honestly, this shade right here, so pretty, so pretty. Like I wasn't really wanting to do kind of a dark lip. And I don't think that this is dark, pretty much everything's dark on me, my skin's so pale. But I think that this is one of those very universally, I mean, this is again, very neutral, very, very neutral. So it's so universally flattering, especially as a gloss. It's just a wash of color on top of anything that you wanna use it on, even if it's just bare lips. So if you guys enjoyed this, I hope you did. Give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Make sure you check out down below. I have discount codes for a lot of the stuff that I use. I will list everything that I used, but also, you know, make sure that you kind of get your money off, get your bargain where you need it. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.